these are poems from the bowsprit. They're poems that were written after the death of uh, my husband, James Simmons, so many of them are elegies. Cocoon. I love to walk on the long strand with my old good dog and my son on a warm day in September. The pain of my husband's death is still present and walks with us on the cooling sand. We walk for and throw stones for our dog, who is blind and deaf and overprotective. I thank God for what I have, and there is a sort of peace that comes with grief after the cocoon falls away and you stand naked, shaking before the future. Nothing will ever be the same. You don't want it to be. Let change come. Let the changes come. Let all of them be good ones. The Ark. And home is that ark of childhood, a boat that shelters us from the storm, from tides and time that divide a family. Maybe this is the story of Noah and all his disconcerting tribe. The smell of the boat is of teak and pine resin, a mother has put an old pine dresser on board, and there are photographs in brown frames of children captured for a minute in some true moment. The children shine as wet as the wettest day of summer. I am a child caught in a frame, and I am the mother, changed to that keeper of childhood, to what I am, a woman whose life holds its own solidity of form for a while. My life cradled by the wings of the circadian body, a body that will leave me soon enough, soon enough. How do I speak these things to my son and daughter? How do I tell them that when Tori suddenly appears from the mist of a Christmas walk, that distances and proportions disappear. That today, as I hold their hands and walk with my husband, I am also on my father's boat and heading home. All of us are on board, the whole ark of love. Sex. Here is my head, a river full of stars. The darkness of the river courses in my veins. The fire of stars, only chimera of desire that is no more. I am caught between what was and what is. My body connected to the earth only by my love for our son, by a thread of friendships. I cannot imagine a way to love another man. My head is a river full of stars. My eyes reflect a light of what was. I walk where the wind blows through buttercup and hemlock. The rain falls. It flows over me. It's called Alive, Alive, Alive. The heron rose from the drainage ditch in the fields. Its rusty wings, the wingspan greater than my height, the gray-tipped feathers six feet from the car, taking the air more gracefully than I have heard the flight described by poets. What pressures their bodies take. My child's favorite movie's hero said, says life is pain, and we know how it is plagued by poverty and war. But the simple physical ecstasy as the heron gained height made me tremble the way I did when I first kissed my lover, taking in the feeling gratefully of the first spring heat, the sun blazing on yellow gorse and on the white strand, the black-backed gull wings a dark shadow on palest marum grass. I drove on, joy on wings, not expected, not past. <laughs>